This video talks about the kidney anatomy and glomerular structure. I know this is basic, but sometimes we miss questions. So let's go ahead and do it. When we look at the structure of the kidney, we can broadly divide it into the cortex, which is labeled here, and the medulla, right? Cortex and medulla, easy. And then this area, where the blood come from the artery and the vein, this particular area is the renal pelvis, okay? And this has some clinical correlation, this has some clinical correlation, and I'll talk about them in a bit. The renal calyces are these branch-like structures. This would be the renal calyces. And obviously, this is the ureter. You might have to know the medullary pyramids, which are kind of little projections coming out, like this area would be the medullary pyramids. Now let's talk about clinical correlations. Okay, the first thing we have to know is the medulla ischemia. Medulla ischemia is very, very dangerous. And some of the things that can cause ischemia of the medulla is going to be aminoglycosides. And when there is ischemia of the medulla, it can present as shock, okay? So that is a clinical co correlation of the medulla. Another clinical correlation that I want to talk about is the uh, clinical correlation with transitional cell carcinoma. I don't know why I just didn't write like that. Transitional cell carcinoma. Now, transitional cell carcinoma starts in the bladder, but it can move up. It can move up in the ureter, so you can find transitional cell carcinoma in the ureter. You can find it in the pelvis, okay? And it can reach up to the calyces. So you can even find transi transitional cell carcinoma in the calyx. Okay, so I know this is not directly related to, um, you know, I should not be talking about this in the kidney anatomy, but I want to really quickly go over the medulla ischemia. What happens is there is three phases of medulla ischemia. There is the initiation phase where there is damage to the ischemia and we are going to have oliguria. This is followed by decreased GFR phase, okay? And the oliguria is going to be maintained. Sorry, this is going to be the maintenance phase. Maintenance phase where the GFR is going to be decreased but it's going to maintain at that level. And last of all, we have the recovery phase. If the person recovers, then where we are going to have re-epithelization of the kidney, and you know, you might even have poly polyuria because you had oliguria before, now it's trying to compensate. You can even have polyuria, and kidney is going to be back to normal. Okay, so, you know, something that can happen with AT and acute tubular necrosis and acute tubular necrosis can finally be okay. Kind of related to the medulla ischemia, so I wanted to talk about that really, really quickly. Okay, by now we are all familiar with the nephron, so I'm not going to talk about the nephron specifically. What I do want to talk about is which portion of the nephron is most affected or most has is the most likely to be damaged. The portion that is most likely to be damaged is going to be the straight portion of the descending limb and the straight portion of the ascending limb. Okay? Um, you can we know that there is a convoluted portion of the PCT and the DCT, but it's not the convoluted portion which is most likely to be damaged. It's the straight portion of the PCT. So PCT straight portion and ascending limb straight portion, okay, is most likely to be damaged. Other things, not really important. You could ask about GFR, where the, sorry, not GFR, the juxtaglomerular apparatus, and the juxtaglomerular apparatus is kind of like here. Um, it, you know, juxtaglomerular, JG apparatus kind of uh, knows what is going on in the DCT and in the, in the at the beginning of the of the PCT. So now let's talk about uh, glomerulus and knowing where everything is in glomerulus is very very important. 
So this is a wonderful picture of a glomerulus. At the very outside, we can see that the green region, look at the smaller version first, those are going to be our epithelial cells, okay? And after the epithelial cell, we have the gray region, which is going to be our basement membrane, okay? And then the yellow stuff at the very inside, those are going to be our endothelial cell. So you can see that when there is antibodies, they go and bind to the antigens and form blobs of immunocomplex deposition, subepithelial, right? This is subepithelial. And it can also have, there is also, they, there can also be deposition subendothelial, but you know exactly where they go now, right? It's, it's right inside the endothelium, if it's a sub, sub uh, endothelial. The podocytes kind of stick out around here on top of the uh, epithelial. So first we have the podocytes, followed by the epithelial, followed by the basement membrane, followed by the endothelial cells, okay? So this is very, very important. So the picture that you are used to looking at first aid would look something like this. Imagine that this is going to be the afferent and efferent. Oops. And this is going to be bound inside the glomerulus like so okay you're going to have glomerulus parietal cells here don't forget about those ones and then you are going to have they what color did they have they had green right you're going to have like podocytes here followed by epithelial cells here so this would be your epithelial cells epithelial cells is going to be followed by uh, your basement membrane, okay, basement membrane is going to follow epithelial cell. And after the epithelial cells, you're going to start happy, having the endothelial cells here, okay. Other cells you're going to see is going to be mesangial cells, mesangium, the mesenchyme of the glomerulus. Mesangial cells is kind of, they're fillers of the glomerulus. So just a quick uh, pathology question, if I asked you, uh, you know, which disease are going to have sub-epithelial, um, let's say, sub-epithelial deposits, okay? One example would be MGN, membranoglomerular nephritis. And what kind of, what are you going to see in electron microscopy? We're going to see spike and dome, okay? Spike and dome. So where are they going to go? They're going to be subepithelial. So right underneath the green area. So like kind of around here, subepithelial deposits. Another random information I'm just going to throw in out there is that in the kidney there is something called peritubular capillaries. Okay, peritubular capillaries is going to make our apple. Okay. So that is pretty much completes our uh, kidney anatomy and glomerular structure.